Midjourney has positioned itself as the leader in the AI-generated art space. And even though the space became very crowded between Stable Diffusion, Dali, Blue Willow and other players that just recently entered the space, Midjourney is still leading the pack. And now, after months of testing and trial, Midjourney have uh, uh, introduced its version 5. So, what's new? Well, let's find out. A few weeks ago, I published my tutorial on Midjourney 4, and it's been tremendously successful. It had over 200,000 views and brought over 3,000 people into the Hacking More Than Life Discord, by the way join us in the Discord as well. In this tutorial, I taught how to use Midjourney from beginner to an expert, including how to generate your own AI avatar. And a lot, a lot more. Be sure to check out this video, where I have a whole detailed tutorial on Midjourney in general. Midjourney has released four versions in 2022, version one in July, two in September, three in August, and four in November and version 5 has been released in March 2023. For the past few weeks, Midjourney have been publishing all kinds of images from Midjourney 5 and letting people rate them to see which ones are the best. And now, finally, Midjourney have allowed us all to use that new version. So what is new? First, you will notice that hands are mostly fixed. For example, this photo of a woman waving goodbye. Notice that most of them, I think actually all of them, actually have five fingers and a purple structure of the hand. Let's upscale number four here, and you see a purple hand. Compare that to uh, those hands here, which are basically nightmare fuels. For example, that number three or that number one, where the hand is flipped or the fingers are cut and so on. Generally, AI is notorious for how hard it is to generate uh, fingers. And uh, version 5 is much, much better than anything before. However, it's still not perfect. Midjourney 5 images also have a way wider dynamic range, which means the difference between the dark areas and the bright areas of the image. So, for example, check this one out. Let's start with version 4 and then we'll switch to version 5. You can see here that the color in the images is rather flat, right? The background and the shadow are pretty similar in uh, the brightness. Compared to version 5, where you can see that the blacks are almost exactly blacks and uh, the white became very, very bright. Pretty beautiful. I just have some chills down my spine just looking at that image. Midjourney 5 is also much better at understanding natural language. So, for example, if I say a cat eating an ice cream, I really don't know what's up with me in ice cream today. I guess I just really want ice cream. A cat eating ice cream is very different than cat and ice cream or cat and ice cream. Check that one out. That one is super cute. Okay, here we have a cat with a double decker ice cream. It's crazy how realistic everything is, except for that idea of the second bowl of ice cream is kind of stuck on top of the first one. Then that one came out as a um, like the cat being an ice cream. And here we have the cat and the ice cream basically like looking at each other. Very, very different. Midjourney is also much, much better at generating realism. And in fact, it will go towards more realistic images by default. Interestingly enough, with that uh, emphasis on realism, Midjourney 5 also can emulate a lot of different lighting conditions and lenses with very different lighting very easily. To get full control over Midjourney 5, it really helps to have all the different photography terms nailed down. Like for example, uh, what is the difference between backlight and front light, flat light versus lambent lighting, and also the different lenses that could be used. In order to make all of that easier, I will link in the description my light and lens guide that will give you examples of generated images with different lighting and different lenses that you can use in your own images. For example, a dark little medieval town with volumetric lighting, V5, versus spotlight. And now let's add lens instructions. So 
and something closer. And let's compare all of this and how it looks and how it behaves. So here we have a medieval town with volumetric light. Now we have some spotlight and you can see there's a lot less of this fog and kind of diffuse light, but are more precise. And at 25 millimeters, you see a wider kind of image from closer. It almost looks like toy houses. Compared to that, that looks a lot more realistic or maybe like a, a 3D video game. And here we have a 85 that kind of zooms a lot more. And again, with spotlighting, it's funnily enough that Midjourney decided to make it more of like a puppet town, even though we did not give those instructions in the prompt itself. Midjourney 5 is also a lot, a lot better at complex prompts. So for example, anthropomorphic cat, Pixar style, similar in style to The Last Supper, sitting around a table. Well, in case you don't know what anthropomorphic means, it means human-like. Playing poker in a dark, smoky room, inspired by realistic animation, elements from Pan's Labyrinth and other Guillermo del Toro works. Scary and cute at the same time. Let's sound this and see what we get. And you can see I use here the aspect ratio of 16 by 9, so a widescreen aspect ratio. And it becomes very stylized and very, very realistic and actually what I imagined. Those are anthropomorphic cats, Pixar style, playing poker in the style of The Last Supper. Or, for example, Nolling. Nolling is always fun, right? Nolling is the art of putting objects in a pattern. So let's see how V5 does it. And here we have beautiful Nolling of photography equipment. Thank you, Jean, for sharing with me the Nolling prompt. That is really awesome, except that lens is pretty crazy. And look, it almost got Canon properly written here. Another thing that was fixed in uh, Mid Journey 5 compared to Mid Journey 4 is uh, the aspect ratio. And now Mid Journey 5 basically supports a huge variety of aspect ratio. It's no longer limited to 2 to 3 or 3 to 2 like Mid Journey 4 has been. And you can even do anamorphic uh, aspect ratios, which basically means like the cinema. Usually it's 239 by 1. However, Mid Journey does not support floating point, so like decimal point inside. Uh, aspect ratio and so you can just multiply it by 10 so basically instead of 239 by 1 you write 24 by 10 and here we have a blue smurf plotting revenge at a anamorphic aspect ratio mid journey 5 is also bringing back the tile parameter that allows you to generate tiling images which is pretty cool if you want to do textures or repeating wallpapers or any images that kind of repeat on the corners or on the edges, check this out. So let's generate an radioactive detailed gas with mushrooms and make it tile. And you can see that those images repeat on the corner. You see the piece of mushroom here is the continuation of the mushroom here. And here and here is the stem of that mushroom. One of the most popular uses of Mid Journey is to do AI self-portraits. And Mid Journey 5 have become much, much better at that. Uh, it's better replicating images and it's a lot more flexible and because of its wider styles and dynamic range it uh, can generate much better images and in fact later in the video I will show you how Midjourney itself can extract prompts from existing images and use them as well. I promise you that I will show how to upload images and copy the URL on mobile on desktop and inside the Discord app. So depending on where do you have Discord open the process is slightly different, but not too different. So if you're inside the Discord app, it's actually pretty simple. You can either press here on the plus, upload a file, choose an image, send it, and then right click and copy link. And we have the link to the image. Make sure that you have attachments in the resulting image. Otherwise, it's not the right URL. If you're running Discord in the browser, so you see the URL here, that's your Chrome or Edge or whatever. The process is very similar. You press on that, you choose the file, upload it. However, you don't have here the option to copy the image. So how do you do that? You click on the image and you get this pop-up with the image inside. Click here, copy image others. And then you go back to here and you have the same attachment URL. If you're on a mobile, press plus here, choose the image and upload, then long press on the image itself 
and copy media link. And then when you paste, you see the same attachment here. Now let's tie the same image we did with version four before. So that URL has a pilot with version four. And you see now that Mijoni shows the image that you just copied. And let's compare it with version five. And here you can see that actually the image is less similar than me than in version four. Midjourney 5 also finally supports image weights again. What are image weights? Image weights allow you to define how much weight the image has as opposed to the text prompt. Kind of similar to how I showed earlier the double semicolon two or double semicolon one in text prompts. The same with images. So how do you use it? Well, you add minus minus IW between uh, 0 0.5 to 2 and the higher the number the closer the resulting the generated image will be to the input image rather as uh, Midjourney calls it to the image prompt. So if you're using your own photo for a portrait or like for an AI avatar and it doesn't come out similar to you at all well try to use an uh, image weight which is higher. If you want something more creative and kind of more animated or cartoonish, use an image weight which is lower. Let's take, let's take the image three here and try to make it a bit more similar. Let's make it in a jungle. That one seems to be the most similar to me. Let's upscale it. And I want to experiment a bit with image weights. So image weight 0.5 versus image weight 2. And here you can see very, very clearly that with 0.5, the images don't look like me at all. In fact, this one looks like a girl with long hair for some reason. But at uh, uh, 2, the images are much, much closer to me. However, the face does not look correct, and we will fix that later. What if I want to make comic book? Well, the Mid Journey 5 uh, realistic training actually works worse for us here. Let's compare version 4 and 5 at a comic book illustration in a jungle. And you can see that uh, version 4 really looks like a comic book illustration. Basically a comic book illustration of me. Version 5, however, because of its most more realistic training, looks a lot more, well, realistic. It kind of looks like a comic book, but then it doesn't. Uh, the background looks more realistic, and I look like a 3D rendering version of myself. Alright, I promised you a few bonus tips. So, bonus tip number one is slash describe. Slash describe allows you to extract the prompt or like rather how Midjourney sees uh, your own image prompts and then choose prompts to generate from this image. And essentially you can even modify, change it or combine different prompts together. So let's say that same image we generated earlier and Midjourney is um, looking at that image and trying to describe what it is with its own prompts. And now we can choose a specific prompts here and generate images from them. So in this case, we see the man is standing near river in the style of social media portrait, Kia and Gil Allen. I have no idea who those are. Misty atmosphere, Walt Disney, webcam photography, historically accurate, hyper-realistic portraiture. So let's take that one and generate the image. Describe is also very easy to use on a mobile phone because you don't need to upload an image to Discord separately you just upload it directly to the comment. Okay, next is slash blend. So when I was showing you image prompts, you saw that on the mobile phone, it's very complicated to upload an image and then copy the URL and then paste it into the text prompt. All of that becomes very complicated. And what if you just want to take two images and combine them and mix them? Well, that's where slash blend comes in. With slash blend, you can just give the slash blend command and then the Midjourney bot will basically ask you to upload up to five images and combine them together or blend them essentially. Very easy to use on mobile, but a lot less flexible than text prompt. This is what we fed it. Image one and image two. Okay, look at that crazy stuff that came out of this blend. But to be fair, we also fed it really crazy images. So let's see how it go goes when we upscale it. And that's what we get. I mean, it is a pretty good blend of the two, even though it will be the fuel of my nightmares going forward. 
Niji is a special uh, version of the Mid Journey engine that allows you to generate more anime style images. Essentially, it was trained on anime uh, images instead of photographs. And because of that, it generates much more Japanese cartoon style uh, images. Mid Journey has Niji version, both for version 4 and version 5. It can be fun to generate those images, but again, it's less flexible than the default engine. Here is the image with Niji, and here's the exact same prompt with V5. Right, second batch of tips, because you love them so much, and I love giving you tips. So, let's say you generate a mid-journey image, and the face in the image is completely broken. Well, previously I showed you GFP Gun, but there's a much better algorithm available now. It's called Codeformer, and when you feed it an image, it um, basically upscales it and cleans it up. Keep in mind that in order to use Codeformer, you need to sign in with GitHub. It's free, but you still need to have an account though. And then you can just upload the generated image. You can upload the generated image with a broken face and it will fix the face and make it more kind of smoother. What if you want to take an image you generated from Midjourney and you want to print it on a canvas or make it, you know, an art piece for your living room? Well, the images generated from Midjourney, even though Midjourney 5 generates much higher quality images, are still too small to print yeah, at a high quality. And for that, we have ESR Gun. And with ESR Gun, you can upscale an image um, basically four times, while I want to say retain some of the uh, image details, but the reality is that's not retaining, that's actually inventing details outside of kind of the generation algorithm. And then you can use it for free on Replicate as well, the same way that you can use uh, GFP Gun or Codeformer. And in fact, ESR Gun uh, even has GFP Gun built in. So if it upscales and uh, the image has faces in it, the faces become uh, cleaner and kind of smoother in a way. So I'm saving it here and filling it to ESR Gun and submit. And within a few seconds, I get a very high resolution upscale version of that image that I can easily print. Right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's been a lot and it's been a while since I did an, a video on generative AIs, but I promise I will have more of those coming and there's some very, very exciting ones coming. I've been traveling and it's been hard to make videos while I'm away from my studio. Uh, be sure to visit our Discord community where you can play with the mid journey version 5 and now you can play there with Blue Velo and other algorithms as well. If you haven't seen my video on Instagram Picks to Picks, definitely check it out here as well and share the most amazing results and images you have achieved in our Discord. And as always, see you soon with a new digital life hack and new algorithms, including AI algorithms. And speaking of algorithms, be sure to like and subscribe this video so the algorithms knows to recommend it to more people. And until next time, bye bye.